Yo, what's going on guys? Hexmurder here. Gonna be showing you how to make the GDI overlay today. And in case you didn't know, this was uh, this is probably the first step you're gonna wanna do if you're ever gonna make a wall hack. An overlay is basically a transparent window that gets drawn directly above your game window. It's gonna be the exact same size and position. And then we can do stuff like uh, draw squares around these zombies, rectangles, whatever. Uh, so if you're gonna make a wall hack, uh, this is definitely step one. Uh, there's many, many different methods on how to do this, but this one is really simple. Um, it's definitely not the best choice, but it's really easy to get uh, your feet on the ground. So I just have this uh, trainer here. It doesn't actually do anything, uh, just an example. But we are going to add some functionality to this one, so we'll double click on that. So first thing we're going to do, I have another form, which I added by going right click, add Windows form right here called form overlay. I've added nothing to it yet, so uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to add a new form overlay object. So we're going to go form overlay, we'll just call this form, we put a new form overlay. And right here, this happens when the check changes. Double click this, so every time that check changes, this code will be run. So we're going to do a check if checkbox show overlay that checked is true. Then we are going to go frm dot show. Otherwise, we're going to hide it. Simple as that. So let's test that out. Play, hide, display, hide. Okay, that's good. So that works. So now we don't have to do anything in here anymore. Um, you also don't even need it to be done at a checkbox. You can just do this window if you want and have nothing in this window, but uh, I'm just choosing to do it this way. So we have our overlay form here. Actually, you know what? If we just double click the form, this gives us the load method. So when the form loads, this code will be executed. This is the constructor. Um, I don't really like to mess with the constructor too much. I usually do it in the load function. And believe it or not, uh, a lot of the things that I'm going to show you will not work in the constructor for some weird reason. I have no idea why. But we're just going to do it in the load function. So we're just going to do this. Whoops. Dot back color is equal to, and we're going to choose color that we don't like. Color dot. I like. I don't like wheat. So we're going to do that, and we'll just test it out. And as you can see, disgusting color nobody wants to use. And we're going to set the transparency key to the same color. Now if you notice, our new form, transparent. We can't click through it yet though, so it's not very useful. So like I said, the idea is that this form would end up being the exact same size as this, and then we would do drawings on top of it, but as you can see, I can't click anything. So uh, I guess the next step would make it so we can click through it. Which is actually really easy and it took me a really long time to figure out just because I don't know the Windows API and all that crap very well. So on load, I guess we can do it in load. Probably shouldn't. We should put it in the on shown. I guess we can do that later. Okay, initial style. I stole this code off of uh, Stack Overflow since I couldn't figure it out myself. Actually, let me show you exactly where I got it. So I just literally googled click through form C sharp and I found it on the second one here. This is the code we're using. He explains what each and every one of these does. If you want to go look at these on MSDN and see exactly what they do, you can do that. Um, I already did that myself. I would recommend you doing that so you know. Okay, so we're just going to paste his code here, two lines. And this uses uh, get window long and set window long, which are from uh, C++. So we're just going to go ahead and go to pinvoke.net. It's an absolutely wonderful website for any C Sharp developer or as uh, a lot of other uses to visual basic and stuff so we're just gonna go get window long 
search and as you can see pops up with some wonderful C sharp signatures all right so we're just going to copy we're going to do the same thing for set window long I'll be right back when it's done okay so I got them both we're going to go here right at the top of our form overlay and paste our new uh, DLL imports that we got from pinvoke.net and uh, we got some errors because we need to use System dot runtime dot interrupt services, and now these won't give you an error. So now let's see what that did. Form overlay. Oh, we got one more thing to add, and we'll do this dot. Whoops. Topmost is equal to true. Technically, you could do all of this over here and say, okay, topmost, true, but I prefer to do it programmatically. You can do it however you want. So now we have the form. As you can see, we can't actually click on it. We can click right through it. And to get rid of this uh, outline box here, we would just simply do this dot form border style is equal to form, whoops, form border style dot none. And as you can see, it is completely invisible, which isn't very useful for us right now since we don't, um, we still want to be able to see it. So we'll just save that for later when we're all done. So that's working exactly how we want it. Um, the next step would be to make it the exact same size as our Call of Duty window or whatever game you're playing. So we're going to go up here <clears throat> and we're going to do a couple of things. Alright, so Call of Duty to get this registered trademark symbol, just hop on Google, registered trademark, copy, and now you have it. So that's the game window name, just double check, make sure you spell it exactly the same as your game. And we're going to add a handle. We haven't imported this find window function yet. It's also a DLL import. We'll do that in just one second. Sorry, I'm just going off of memory here. Okay, so uh, find window, we need that. We're gonna get that off pinvoke.net. Be right back. All right, so I got find window, and we also need one more DLL import. Uh, it's called get window wrecked, I think. Yeah, get window wrecked. So uh, now we have four DLL imports. That is the very last of them. As you can see, this takes a rectangle object, which we haven't uh, defined in our project, so we're just going to make that. And make sure you do this exactly the same because, hold on, let me just type it so I don't screw it up. As I screwed up five times. Okay, make sure you do it in this exact order, left, top, right, bottom, not left, right, bottom, top, or whatever you want to do, just in this order, because that's what this function is expecting. If you don't, it's going to be really messed up. So, now we're just going to add a rect object up here. Alright. Actually, I don't even think we need to make it a new rect, just rect, rect because it's a struct, yeah, sorry. If it was a class, then we would have to initialize it to a new one, but since it is not, we are going to do it this way. And now all we have to do is come down here and say git window rect, the function we just imported. We'll pass it our handle, and we'll output rect. So after this, rect will be assigned the correct values that we need. So then we can just do this, as in uh, the overlay form, this dot size is equal to a new size of rect dot right minus rect dot left. All right, so that sets the uh, left to right 
size of the form. If you think about it, it's getting the size of this window, right? So if it's a thousand pixels across, and this is 500 pixels across, for example, it would say a thousand on the right side minus 500. That gives you a total size of 500. So it's going to set the size of this to 500 left to right. I'm going to do the same thing over here rec dot bottom minus rec dot top. And make sure you also do it in that order because that's how the computer reads it. So let's just test that out. And as you can see, it is the same size as our game window. However, it is not lined up and we can't click and drag it to move it. So now we just have to set this dot top is equal to rec dot top. Simple enough. This dot left. Put the rec dot left. And now pops up right over our game window exactly where we want it. So I guess all we have to do now is uh, paint an object over it. So I'll give you one example of that really quickly. Uh, C sharp comes with a great graphics library. So we're just going to make a new graphics object. And we need a new pen as well. And we can just add the color in the constructor. So now we have a graphics object, pen object. Um, gonna go over here, go to the events and the paint event. So every time the paint event gets called, this is going to happen. We're gonna set G, our graphics object, equal to E dot graphics. And then we can simply do G dot draw rectangle. And it wants a pen object for the first constructor, so we'll pass in my pen. Uh, it has some more overloads. I don't think we have a rect for it, so we'll just do, um, let's see, two coordinates 100, 100, 200, 200. As you can see, it draws, goes 100 over for the first parameter we passed, 100 down for the next, and it ends at 200 over. 200 down, so 100, 100, 200, 200, so it just drew a square. So that's about it, I guess. Uh, well, I guess we could go ahead and set the border to transparent again, and that'll do it. Actually, still have one more problem. What if we move the game window around? I guess that's for you guys to figure out. It's really simple to fix. If you really can't figure it out, post in the comments, but I would suggest you to try and learn yourself. If you do everything by copying me, you're never gonna learn anything. I literally figured out how to do all of this by sitting down and Googling it for about 15 minutes. Actually, I take that back. It took me a while to find this, uh, the click through function, but I just, I don't know. I, I wasn't using the right keywords, I guess. So that's about it, guys. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, drop a like. I'm outie.